All right, everybody. Here we are tonight again, Tom Cruise Studios, live music in Austin for another episode of Three Beers and a Whiskey. We have sitting in with us tonight, Tyler Fambro. Tyler, everybody, we got a big, nice house crowd, so thank y'all very much for hanging out. Uh, as always, we have beautiful Marissa hanging out. She's going to be on the internet. If you guys have any questions uh, for Tyler, uh, go ahead and just type it in, send it over. Marissa will interrupt our jibber jabber and uh, tell us what's going on. And uh, so we'll go ahead and jump into the conversation. I believe Tyler is uh, uh, generously donating his beers and his whiskey tonight to the house. So uh, I'm gonna grab my beer, and if somebody, you know, somebody want a beer, somebody needs to come get a beer. Come get it. So thank you, sir. And there, uh, yeah. Come on in. Don't, you don't are be scared. Of it. He All right, there we go. So anyway, and then uh, you got your drink right there, sir. Uh, his mystery. Dark colored, not in a whiskey <laughs> shot glass. So, thank you very much for joining me, man. I appreciate it. So, so how how are you doing, man? How's everything going for you? It's going good. The allergy season is kicking right now, but oh. it is it's going good. Is it, wait, but we're in Austin, man. Allergy season is never not kicking. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, so I and I guess backstory for you know everybody is that Tyler opened for Cody Bryan Band uh, roughly a month ago, maybe. Yes, okay, so it was about yes, sir. <laughs> I'm now my dad. Um, so uh, he opened for Cody Brian Band eh, roughly a month or so ago at Buck's Backyard. Yes, sir. Uh, it was a great acoustic set. Just you, your guitar, and doing your thing. Um, and uh, so you know we were hanging out. And I was like, man, this kid's really good. I like this. Um, and then you know didn't really get to talk to you uh, after your set much, cause then Cody Brian band went up and I was shooting some photo and, and doing all that. But afterwards, when we were leaving for the evening, I made a point to try to introduce myself to you. And, and I didn't want to do the, the typical, like, oh, Hey, do you know who I am? <laughs> so I actually told you, I was like, Hey, ask Cody, who's that guy? And, uh, and then I guess somewhere down the line, uh, Kendall, my neighbor, a uh, good friend of the show, he's actually set you up with coming out here to the show and a couple of other bands. And so somehow you and Kendall ended up getting hooked up together. Okay. <laughs> uh, whatever. Uh, and, and then uh, he, he messaged me and he was like, hey, you know, that Tyler Fambro guy, you know, did you? And I was like, yeah, it was a good shape. What about having him on the show? He was like, hell yeah, man. So uh we had an opening this weekend we actually were supposed to have an event yesterday that one got bailed on us and it was just perfect timing where the show i had scheduled uh dropped out and then right at that same time kendall was hitting me up telling me so um so what are you working on music wise what do you got that's that's i guess rolling for you now what are you trying to get so, produced uh, or, or not produced album wise that'd be cool but uh sure. produced for fans, for music out there when you start performing, what do you got going on? Yeah, so uh, I've just been trying to put the pen to the paper and uh, get some songs written down, going. Uh, a lot of trash songs, obviously, but I've heard you got to get those out to that be was, good. Yeah, you got to write a lot uh, to get to the good stuff. For sure, and uh, I've, I've had a couple that I'm proud of. Um, I've been real lucky to have those, actually. It seems the ones you like the most come out in 15 minutes, and the ones you spend an hour on end up getting thrown in the trash so <laughs> they're like that's my baby i worked so long on that one and then you're exactly. like yeah, no. yeah exactly and then you one night you're just sitting down and a sweet tea can give you some inspiration and you end up writing hopefully the next big hit in your mind but oh yeah the way wait what was the saying like the 10 year overnight success exactly <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah i've just been trying to write some songs down uh, i've uh, actually been trying to get a band together recently. Oh, really? Okay. And, uh, I had an audition last night and uh, ended up getting for a drum, right? For drummer David Ortiz, so he'll be joining me soon. At Big Poppy. Oh, that's, that's, oh, that's, that's why it sounds familiar. Exactly. I'm all like, David Ortiz. Exactly. Oh, really? You got the Boston Red Sox? Is now you're I know. Drum street. We need a flag. We need yeah. Something. But uh, so I got that going. I'm still looking for. So how did you meet? Did you just put an ad out? And I mean, interrupting you, but no, how it's did, fine. Yeah. How did you? Did you just put an ad out on uh, Craigslist? Drummer wanted band trying. How did you well, start so, uh, the feeler for? Yeah, so I've never. My dad is on Craigslist a lot, and I, I'm not on Craigslist that much, so I wasn't very familiar with ads. But I know there's ads on Craigslist, but I actually took a uh, to Facebook. Ooh. Facebook, uh, there's, a, there's yeah. a page for that actually, and uh, he hit me up and uh, wanted to audition, and 
we had a great uh, session the other night and it went really well and I felt that um, I didn't need to go anywhere else with it. Honestly, cool. it felt right. So you got it's now you got you and a drummer and now in country music I've dealt with or had lots of friends and bands where it's the the front guy who's you know the lead singer, acoustic orly, and then he's got another guy with him that plays guitar. Um, in the rock scene, there's tons of bands that are just guitar and drums. Together the whole band. Mm -hmm. But do you have any shows coming up where you're like all oh, telling David, here's my songs that we're gonna play and we got a show coming up? We're we're getting together and we're starting right. to practice. Uh, I don't know when we're gonna get on the stage. Uh, I'm I'm real I'm real hesitant to go out there unless we're ready to go out there. If that makes yeah, sense. Yes, yes, it does. Don't uh, do it. <laughs> but uh, but I do know uh, a cool funny fact about that is uh, uh, I was at a concert about a year and a half ago. I was seeing Whiskey Myers. I'm sure everybody. Oh Whiskey Myers. yeah, Whiskey Myers is badass. And uh, we got there early that night, and uh, the opener I had never heard of him. His name's Bones Owens. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever heard of Bones mm -hmm. Owens. And uh, he comes out there with just him and a drummer. And I was totally amazed. How long? A year and a half ago? A year and a half ago, yes. And he comes out there, and it's just him with the electric guitar and vocals, and then the drummer. And they're up there rocking it. I mean, totally filling the whole room up with crazy sounds, and it, it worked like, well. like, how does this? Exactly. exactly. And here you are a year and a half later going, oh, damn, here I am. I know. <laughs> so do you yourself have any shows coming up that you've got booked? Yes, actually. Okay. So on April third, uh, I'm back at Buck's Backyard. Cool. My, my kind of start, you could say. And I'm opening up for the Matt Muller Band right now. So that's that's awesome. Uh, really, the only thing I have going right now. I have some private events later in the. So like, oh, hey, man. You know, but but those private events, those you know, first of all, you make some money on the private events for sure. But then on top of that, it's the people you meet at the private events that are like, hey, you know. Come, I've got, I've got this going on, or come to my place, or we'd love to have you, and you, the networking thing always yes, makes sir. a big deal, yeah. So speaking about networking, let's say hello to, who's David Sambro? Oh, that's my dad. So. Hi, oh. David. <laughs> hey, sir, how you doing? So, so he's so, watching he's, live, and then we have a, our internet director who oh, is here, oh. <laughs> he's nervous, he's sick, so that's Rudy. And Rudy, also, love you, sir, thank you for watching. We I, have a, a Tom Sambro. Yeah, that's that? my granddad, so cool. we have the whole family watching, I guess. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Nice. Thank y'all for tuning <laughs> in and watching. Hey. And then say hi to Michael Tovar, too. Oh, what's up, Tovar? Hey, and we're going to try some of that Moreno barbecue, and I'm going to eat that. I'm going to get that uh, nacho, brisket nacho plate you're talking about. And then let's say hi to Karen Rathmill. She's uh, online. Oh, thank you for the drinks, Miss Karen thank Rathmill. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So cool. Very cool. Um, and you. So. Got your dad, your grandfather watching. Um, how are they with supporting you on the, so where did the music thing come from for you? So, um, funny story is my dad was a drummer back in the day, but he was in the hair metal stuff. So he actually had his drum set back in the day. There's nothing wrong with that. Exactly, no, yeah, so. Uh, Props to you, sir. Exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, was he, was there a band that he was with that he, you know, he, he brags to you about or says, oh, this was me when I was playing or. He Man, just, so it was he, all garage uh, band stuff for him. It was all garage band stuff. Okay. He never actually fully joined a band. He, uh, him and my mom met, you know, like, oh, he wanted to get a full H5 kind of thing going. And, uh, mm, and yeah. the cool thing about that kind of is the other way. So they, uh, my parents actually, and my grandfather as well, they all came from education. So my granddad was a coach, football coach. And then really? my dad's football coach as well. Okay. My mom's a principal. And uh, when I was going into college, uh, they told me to not be a teacher coach. They said, do not be a teacher <laughs> do coach. Do not follow in our footsteps. Exactly. Okay. And I'm doing that same thing in college and right now. And now you're following in their footsteps. Exactly. Yes, sir. But, the, but they, you've got the music thing that you, yes, sir. you're so, really pushing into. They are supportive of it, I think. They, they are kind of digging on me. I think they're getting tired of me playing all, all the time at the house. I definitely am getting some, go to bed, but. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what time it exactly. is? Go to bed. For sure. Right. So, so you're, you're uh, you know, for lack of a better term, you're a working stiff. You're doing your yes, nine sir. to five, you're working your job, but then you're you're hammering on the music stuff. Yes, sir. How long have you been playing guitar and say, has it been in, since you were little or how long have you been doing it? So, funny, uh, that's funny too, is I picked up the guitar last December for the first time in my whole life. So, yeah, I picked Wait, up last, last December, time. like 2018? No, so it was this, or two months ago. 
Or no, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, yes, yes, 18. Okay. Yes, sir. So I picked, they, uh, my parents didn't know what to give me for Christmas. And uh, and I drummed when I was little, too. Uh, nothing, anything. But sure, well, your dad had a kit, right? Yes, sir. Oh, of course, yeah. So I was bang, bang on it every night. And then uh, I kind of put music away uh, since we moved around, life happened and all that stuff. And then they didn't know what to give me this last Christmas. And I didn't ask for anything either. But they just got me a guitar out of just wanting to see if I would pick it up. And uh, there was a lot of a lot of late night dorm room nights spent in uh, Stephenville, Texas, playing the guitar at night. Learning Stephenville, it. Texas. Wait, that's Tarleton. Yeah, Tarleton State. No yes, sir. shit. Yeah, so I spent my first two years of college over there being a Texan. And uh, funny enough, leading the whole story back into whirlwind, uh, how I got into music was my girlfriend uh, hit me up really late at night. I think it was like 2 a.m. She woke me up actually on the phone. And uh, the next night, Co Wetzel was coming to town with uh, Casey Donahue. Nice. Oh, okay. And, uh, That's a good double bill. And I've, I've heard of Casey Donahue. My parents love Casey Donahue. And I was listening to him all throughout that. I wasn't really on the co train yet, though. And uh, so I was like, yeah, I'll go just in spite of wanting to go back to bed at the time. <laughs> and so I got online, bought the tickets. And uh, the next night, I was starstruck into life right now I because do that. I, want, I can do yeah, this yeah i mean co wessel he puts on one of the best shows i've ever been to yeah our, and, uh, our boy kendall over there is like we, there's been many nights we're sitting out on the back barbecuing or just drinking and there's stuff burning on the grill and he's all like <laughs> co wessel co wessel exactly. like okay oh uh, yeah so and that's another uh, thing too is you go to his concerts and his fans are crazy and i hate to admit it but i've become one of those crazy fans all the time crazy, man i mean so, if, you, if you've got somebody that you're like that inspires you for sure and then you become passionate about it. and then you're like well i want to play guitar also or i want to sing or i want to you know um so, so where are you oh, uh -oh. oh so speaking of fans uh, -oh. uh we have ben holmes watching oh ben holmes. so he's a uh the legend at charlton state actually he um he just, oh, he just finished up as the quarterback at Charles State. So really? He, he that's why records. he asked, who is your favorite college quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a answer. setup. Wow. Uh, yeah, so he, uh, he actually broke a lot of records at Charles these past few really? years. And he's looking to go into the CFL right now. Well, there no, you go, really, then. Really, sure. And then we've got the CFL and then oh, XFL. Is just the XFL is starting up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you hear that? The quarterback uh, for Charlton is watching right now? Or what? The former. Former, yes. Former, he yeah. just graduated. But... Yeah, thanks and, for listening, Ben. Yeah, <laughs> hi, Ben. And uh, Rudy, our internet director, he says you look really young. How old are you? So I'm 20 years old. 20 years well, that's old. That's not... Uh, that's... Uh, I mean, wait, wait, wait. How is... Uh, I mean, you know, in in, in the scope of, of the music scene or, or country music, I mean, there's been lots of where you sit 13, 14, 13, 14 years old and blue. Leanne Rhymes. She was awesome though. So there's not too young, you're not, you know, yeah. Uh, oh no, you're oh you're only 20. Although there's a, a a band here in Austin. I've been friends with these guys forever. Um they've changed names from what they were back in the beginning to now. But I was friends with those guys back when their bass player had black X's on his hands and oh, they would yeah. play shows <laughs> and, and it was like, I'd see them and I'm all like, dude, wait, how was your bass player, he's gonna play X's on his hands? <laughs> yeah. And they're all like, yeah, no, he's, you know, but then of course later in the show, they're all like, he's all with his beard, I'm like, oh, <laughs> however, What's the name of the bar that's no longer open anymore? Was Lucky Lounge. Lucky Lounge. Lucky Lounge. Yeah, they're not open, so we can throw them under the bus. Um, <laughs> see, we're diving off of topic on you. Um, so, as far as your uh, music, so you just picked up the guitar a little over a year ago, um, and you're, you're now auditioning for um, performers or other uh, bandmates. For sure. Is that the right way to say it? Bandmates? Yes, sir. So you got a drummer that's on board with you. Um, what's the next step for you in trying to get this process? Because, you know, I mean, we don't know yeah, who's watching. Sure. Or or they're not going to see it live, but they're going to come on on the backside of this and watch this and go, oh, okay. And then when you, because uh, you're going to do a little, uh, you're going to do a little acoustic for us. Like a little Frenchie that's just wandering around the bottom of the set. Um, you can do some acoustic stuff for us later. So, again, this is like, uh, not audition material for you, 
but material for somebody out there is all like, oh my God, wow, you know, and then you're like, hey, so I'm looking for a bass player. I'm looking for uh, another guitar player or keyboards or what's, what's your plan? What's the design of what you want to have for the Tyler Fambro band? That's by the way, that's what's going to be the name of the band? That's what I'm looking at calling it right now. I'm playing okay. around with some names. Uh, they're, as in like, a, so Co Wetzel, for example, started uh -huh. out with Co Wetzel and the Convicts. Uh -huh. uh, Giovanni right now is Gio, Gio and the Hired Guns. And so there's a lot of names out there like that, but then the Cody Bryan band is a great name too, so. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> just, and, that's and the yeah, crazy thing is else. that's like, that's not even their, his name. So it's like, it's super, <laughs> like, you know. Don't blow my cover. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're, we're keeping it down low, but, but uh, so besides you were like rolling around the, the band names or what, what could come out of, what's your, what's your, project look like that you want to have it's you and a drummer now yep but what's what do you what's your next what are you gunning for next there you go so i'm hoping for a four piece i'm hoping for a lead guitarist and a bass okay um but i also have i'm open to anything if we're being honest because yeah. good music is good music it doesn't matter how many people you have in the band now are you, are you located here in austin are you down in san marcus where do you <clears throat> i'm in south austin right south now. austin okay Hey man, hey, nothing wrong with being south of the river, people. <laughs> Driving north of the river and going up there to South Waco. Uh, I believe Dad calls it Pflugerville and Round Rock. Oh, <laughs> That's all right. We'll hang out down here. We're good. Um, so you're here in South South Austin, but doing uh, Bucks. Have you where else? Have you have you played other live shows anywhere Not else? Not in Austin. So I'm just recently back in December of this okay. year. This this previous December. Uh, is when I've been back, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to play at Bucks, and I got to open up for Cody, which is amazing. Uh, but Cody Brian, yeah. yes, Cody Brian, Brian. Early, yeah. Uh, but in Stephenville, I had the Purple Goat. That was a good venue for me. Purple Goat. Yes. So it was a it was a patio venue. That was my first ever paid gig, and I was that held a special place in my heart. So okay. So you were, so you played there one time. I play there multiple times. Oh, okay, cool. Yes. So, so it's just like so the first it's a, game, it went well. It's so a home away from home for you. Yes. Like you get the opportunity to play there again, you're gonna go and jump on that in a heartbeat. Yes, sir. And looking forward to going back with like, oh, here I am back with my band. Exactly. Nice. And, uh, okay. Another place I played in Stephenville was uh, sorry, I mean, oh sweet, yeah, sir. for sure. Uh, was Bostocks. Uh, was what? Bostocks. 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 So it's Tyler, a, uh, he can pass. Oh, me. oh, for sure, yes. And then. So, uh, who Anybody else in the house? Anybody somebody else in the house? Please come grab a beer. Somebody come grab a beer. Owen, oh, thank you, Owen, for saving it. All right. So, um, Boss Docs is a place you said you've played before. Or you're yes. Okay. And uh, and ironic enough, that was right when I was. Uh, well, I obviously played it later, but I was still in Stephenville and Cole was from Stephenville. Oh, and, I didn't uh, know that. Yes. So his cool. uh, band, that's where they started out. Was at Boss Docs. So really? That, I walked in that place and it was surreal. Uh, they just filmed a video there actually. Really? Uh, their newest music video is filmed at Boss Talks in Stephenville, so. Yeah, you know, I have to tag the shit out of Co Wetzel. I'm just like, oh, dude, man, we were all over you on I this. Know. You're gonna have to, like. <laughs> I know, for <laughs> sure. Get Come sit down with this man, drink three beers. And yeah. So we have a. I'm gonna interrupt you because I think this, this is, is important. This is what her, her um, job is. Dude, like. So b before we go on, let's say hi to Mia. Mm. And she giggled Maybe, yeah. at the South Waco comment. Cause oh, pretty yeah. Funny. Oh, yeah. She does live way up there in South Waco. Uh, your dad is Tom, right? My, that's my granddad. That's her granddad. Uh, he says, Anne Wyclaw is watching from Australia. Oh, wow. So, I, yeah, we have family across seas and everything. So. Nice. So, so we're going to international tonight, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so who is Anne Wyclaw? Um, I'm not too familiar with my distant family uh, out there, but uh, but he wants you to know you yes. got distant family from Australia watching. Yeah, we have so we we have family in uh, Australia, New Zealand, That's super cool. and then uh, down the line we have uh, I have like a distant uncle who owns an island in Fiji. So it's like, uh, yeah, we're going on vacation. <laughs> yeah, we're all like, yeah, hey, all of us. And we're, vacation we're just going to, you know what? The first annual three beers and whiskey fest will be on some <laughs> island in Fiji in the South Pacific, you know, Let's go. Tyler's family. For sure. Oh, <laughs> he's, uh, David, uh, that's dad, right? Yes, that's dad. Uh, he said cousin. Cousin, there we go. There we go. There we go. Cool. <laughs> Look, I in Texas, wait, wait, hold on. Hey, in uh, Texas, no. everybody's, that's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma's cousin, he said. 
Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. There we go. Thank yeah. you for clarifying. They're, they're super big on ancestry, so. <laughs> That's awesome, watching, though. Click on the leaf and watch yeah. it grow. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. So, um, as far as writing, I know you were talking about earlier, uh, you know, write a lot and then, you know, kind of just weed it out. Um, how do you record your... I don't want to say thoughts, but like For sure, your yeah. melodies. When, when, when you hear it or you, you see the birds on a wire, you're like, oh, I know that chord. Or you hear the the, the taps and something in a room. How do you, you know, well, what, so, what uh, inspires you and how yeah. do you capture that? Yeah, so uh, this is so funny to say that. I was actually mm -hmm. going through my voice memos on my phone earlier, and that's, that's literally <laughs> what I do. And I was walking, <laughs> I remember so specifically, you. yes, I was walking specifically, I remember the day exactly. I was walking to Chick fil A at, at Tarleton State. And uh, there's a voice memo on my phone, and I clicked on it this morning. It had no title, and I was wondering what it was. And it's literally going, da 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 <laughs> And I, I thought back, I'm like, why would I do that? But that really is what st songs stem from, is you get the ideas from that, and then my yep. notes page is full of just one-line lyrics and everything like that. Yeah. I, I, down. I had, um, and I called, mm -hmm. so, so Cody Bryan Band, I've known Cody for a, a really long time. He's probably like... The, you know, Donnell Robinson, MC Overlord, uh, that's kind of my introduction into this. And then it was a Bobby Bookout, and then Ryan Harkrider. And I think right behind that was Cody with his original project and how I met him. And that was one of those things that we actually talked about and joked about was, was um, recording and making noises on your phone and writing one-liners and all this stuff. And when we came up with the idea for Three Beers and a Whiskey, I actually was in HEB, like in the freezer section, walking around in the meat aisle, and I was all like, oh, I've got a lyric for, uh, <laughs> I've got a, a line for like a, a, a theme song for three beers and whiskey, and I like, I, I hummed it or sang it into my phone, and then I, I immediately texted him, I'm like, dude, this is what I have. It, so yeah. it's just, but when inspiration hits you, and it's exactly. funny, like you go through all the, the memos on your phone, <laughs> sure. and you're like, oh, my phone memory is full from little one liners exactly. and noises that you make, and you look back at it and like, oh, I don't know what I was doing, but I like that melody. Tell me again who Tom Tambro is again? That's Granddad. That's Granddad. He says Uncle Tommy is watching too. Oh, so the, literally the whole family is watching. <laughs> hey, man, this is all on you. I, yeah, I, I do this all the time. I can act stupid, but, you know, <laughs> and they're all watching you going, oh, he's on the internet. Exactly. So, uh, man, we talked about, me and you joked about this the other night when we actually talked on the phone, and I was like, okay, i got to call you and be like, are you allergic to dogs? Exactly. Uh, are you a vegan? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is how we do it when we lay down, and I was like, uh, you know, this is going to live on the internet forever. <laughs> exactly. So, so not only is it your interview that you have, that you can be like, hey, here was my live stream interview that I did, and this is what we talked about, and then when it gets chopped up into little pieces, here's the edited, and then there's your performance that you'll do that'll live out there. And so you've got, how many songs do you have, like, in the can, in the can, so to speak? This is stuff that, like, these are my originals, these are my songs, this is what I'll play at a show, uh, at a, at, whatever performance wherever at whether it's in you know your home your hometown college hometown yeah. or at bucks what do you have like ready to go these are so uh i've got five right now that uh -huh. i've been playing consistently and i feel proud of um of course there's like I, like i said before i have a ton just in the scratch notebook just a ton of songs i've actually finished a lot of songs that i will never ever play for anybody else <laughs> uh, <and laughs> play for yourself when you're bored exactly one day. man uh my first song i ever tried to write and i credit uh one of the songs i have is 85 i credit that song as my first one because that's one i'm real proud of but there's actually one that i had before that before i even started playing guitar that i wrote and uh and i made my girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> and, and you, that's awesome. Not saying all songs are good now, but <laughs> um, so I mean, five songs is dude. That's a solid EP for sure. Because I mean, I've I've dealt with people that are like, hey, here's my EP, and I I put it in, I listen to the disc or the the flash, or whatever. I'm like, oh, two songs. What the hell? <laughs> um, three songs is a good, but five. That's that's a solid EP. So, yes. are you? And man, the 
way technology is with being able to record at home on the computer uh, with your cell phone um, what's your plan for putting it putting it down putting a recording and and getting a product out to us to people sitting on the sofa to people watching what's your plan for that so uh, as soon as I get a band together, uh, we're gonna go actually hard on that. Much so point. so you're not gonna do an acoustic. You and your guitar put it out an EP thing. You're gonna you're gonna. No, I want to do a full band. Nice. Okay. All right. And then you gotta find a producer at that point, which I, I idolize producers. Of course, there's a, and I I don't know the guy at all. I just know of him because of all the dudes that mm -hmm. I like. Uh, but I believe his name is Taylor Campbell in uh, Denton, and he has recorded you up there. And I mean, if ever I can get that dude to produce my stuff, that that would be the there you go. Because all. those are every one of the albums I listen to every day come from him. So there you go. So that's that's your stretch goal on that. Yes, sir. Um, uh, and I say stretch goal meaning are is your plan like I'm not going to release something until I can get it done like this, or is it like no I'm gonna I'll get my band together and we'll, we'll put something together and we'll record it, produce it, and put it out ourselves. I think that I think that's part of what, it, what I'm thinking right now. Okay. I think that's definitely down the line goal, like I said. Uh, but I definitely want to have some out there when if when I, when I start playing my music live for people to go, oh, I like that song. Let's go download it on Apple Music or Spotify. Okay. And I'm glad you just said that because that is I've I've always like poked at everybody that I've had on the show with the question about social media and how. Number one, the short attention span is for the world now, yes. but it seems like the art of putting out a full length, you know, not vinyl, though vinyl's freaking cool, but a full length CD, which is a whole story you're putting together, exactly. like from the front to the end, not just the music, but how the songs are laid out in that order. Um, so, so that's an art by itself. But that's not how the world is running right now. The world running right now is what I perceive, and this is my question to you is, your feeling on this is, it's put out a song, promote the hell out of it with a video, with, you know, whether it's a produced video or like, but put out a song, promote it for a few months, put out a song from, and just do the singles and like hammer the market with singles. So what's, either what's your plan, like, or how you, what's your feeling on that? Like, is that what you really believe is, is where it's going to? I do, I do believe that. I believe that uh, that's a way that people can incorporate a, your first kind of thing out on the market, or if you already had stuff out there and you've been silent for a while, that's your first thing back right. since you've released stuff. So I do, I, I'm always open to like re releasing a single first, and that honestly may be a good idea. Uh, I'm, honest, I, I'm so. telling you, man. It, but so the experience I've had, and and I have my music experience is being a fan of the music, For sure. and being a fan of the music in Austin is what drives me to do this. Have a show, have somebody on that like I saw their music or I heard their music or it, it's something that they inspired me enough to have them on the show. But it's like you have to have. You know, in, in your case, you've got five songs that you're really comfortable with, so you technically have, you've got 10, 10 to 14 months of, of self-promotion you could do. And yes. like, I'm going to put this song as an acoustic, you, I'm going to put this song out, I'm going to like produce it myself and do this, and I'll get my friends and, you know, somebody who's in this tweak it because... Jesus Christ, the way computers are and the internet, exactly. there's so much you can do yourself in your home studio. Exactly. Produce it and put out your own, you know, film a video with your friends, go back to college and, and exactly. just shoot a video and, and do something to promote yourself for that first single, even if it's acoustic and you, and drop that and, and beat up the internet for a month or a month and a half on this, you know, with Facebook and and, and snap and, and everything else that's part of it and just go 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 and while you're promoting that you're steadily in the in your own home studio exactly. doing your next project um, for me I'm like dude that would be super badass because yes. now you're getting yourself out there even if it's just you and your guitar exactly. but behind the scenes now you're you've got a drummer already yes. so you put this out and now more people can see you 
Exactly. And so now you're like, you go onto Facebook again where you went up before and say, hey, so I'm looking for, you know, bass player and, you know, somebody to do lead. And all of a sudden, they're like, dude, we saw your video, man. Hey, man, I want to be part exactly. of the project and go, go, go. Um, I, as much as I love the storytelling behind a full length CD and the project and everything that the artist or the performer puts into that. Um, For sure. Unfortunately, the world is really what it is. It's like, I'm gonna record the single, I'm gonna drop it, I'm gonna promote it, and I'm gonna push it. And behind the scenes, we don't know what you're doing, but on the yeah. front end, all we see in the world and social media is you're putting this out, pushing, 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 yeah. pushing, pushing. Push. And I don't know how it was, like, like I said, I'm only 20, so I wasn't around when like the cassettes and everything were out there, but like, I'm not saying you were either, I'm just saying like, in, in general, <laughs> it, it, like in general, like uh, that couldn't have been a thing back then when people released a, C, a single on a CD because I mean, I th so yes and no. I mean, there were singles that were released, you know, in old times, with with a cassette or with a CD, and it really was like one or two songs on the cassette. You flip it over, and it was the same two damn songs. Or with the disc, oh, gotcha. it was like two songs recorded on it. And that was back in the day when CDs were really freaking expensive. Now they're so dirt cheap. And then we don't even have CDs anymore. You know, it's all digital. I don't have a CD player in either one of my cars. Like nobody had a Sony Walkman. I have a Sony Walkman. Wait, a wait, a Sony Walk. Wait, wait, a Sony Walkman with CDs or with? Yeah, like yeah the Sony Walkman. Yeah. Oh, was that the 90s? That was yeah. The 90s. Okay. See, we're getting feedback from the crowd. Now. Exactly. Like, oh, y'all are coming alive now. Thank you for participating in your hoodie. <laughs> With a hoodie. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to hold them and put the headphones in. But, but no, I don't know if I'd buy a CD nowadays. Really? It's all, it's all about So, okay. So, I, I don't know if the microphone's going to pick it up, but somebody in the crowd, the, the comment was, you know, I don't know if I would buy a CD nowadays, you know. Which, I mean, that's, <clears throat> but this is what me and you were talking about. My, my, my laptop doesn't even play the CD. Mine doesn't either. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Well, exactly. Yeah, so, so vinyl's more in the Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, vinyl. 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 Now, yeah. Uh, I, yes. And, I mean, I've got, around on the walls, I've got some vinyl. Super proud of it. Like, somebody put out this on disc. They did digital, and then they were like, they spent, oh, shit shit ton of money to put it out on vinyl. Um, in fact, so there's a band from San Antonio. And I love these guys. Oh, this is nowhere near country music. Uh, it is just metals upon a burning body. And you came to my house. Dude. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I was like, the band went to my house? <laughs> the band showed at my neighbor's house. So they, these guys have been around doing it for a minute. They're not like and they're not old dudes. They're these young kids from San Antonio. They've got like four albums out maybe. Um, and they they did the thing. They went out and they pounded it. They played all the small clubs and the bars. And they booked themselves shows constantly. I mean, every night during the week when they played for their family because nobody else showed up. On the weekend, by the time they got on stage, everybody else in the bar had cleared out and they were playing with the girlfriends and the bar staff. But these guys continued to hammer it and do it and do it. And so, wait, 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 wait. Can you put some ice in there, please? And maybe some, uh, can, can I get a little bit of Coca-Cola to, to, to put? Oh, dude, you're killing me, man. Cody's going to share this with me, so. Cody? Is he doing straighter with a Coke or what? How are we doing this? I know, that's what I'm asking. So we, we, we're nice in there. here one, and beer two is down. We're about to hit <laughs> whiskey and beer number three. So, okay. All right. We're doing with ice, sir. We're keeping it classy Cheers. here. We're keeping Cheers. it classy, San Diego. All right. So, so beer one, beer two, and uh, yeah, yes. there you go, man. Thank there you very go. much. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to sip. I am not shooting this. We're sipping this whiskey and ice. It's good. Actually, it's not that bad. Not bad. Well, thanks, sir. Cheers. All right. Cheers. 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 All right. So, so before you go on any further, okay, wait, wait. Before uh, she cuts me off. Uh, Nick Lucetto. Oh, Nick. Former Pflugerville, Pflugerville and actually South Waco. Uh, and Tarleton quarterback. Oh, wow. Really? 
he's uh, live, so we can say hi to him. Oh, what's up, man? Hi. Hey, man. Hi. Thank hi. you for joining us and watching. Go Texas. Man, Tarleton is just like killing it in the house tonight. I know. I know. Texas is strong. Else over there? No comments? Nobody else jumping oh, in? Oh, you're love. You have a lot of fans. Oh, shit. Hey man, see, this fans. is, this is, we bring people on, you watch, so you guys, everybody that's tuned in and saying hey, and we're giving you shout outs, so this is just the interview part, we're just chatting and talking, we're going to cut cameras in a little bit from the live stream from the interview, and we're going to have some tacos and beans that y'all can't have, because you're not here in the house, but all these people will enjoy it. After we do that, we will come back live, and Tyler's going to do some music for us. So, I mean, if you're watching now, who's watching? Who's on live? Uh, I, I die, think there's die, a yeah. lot of there people There is a bunch of watching. Yeah. So, so, stay tuned. I mean, when we cut the cameras, keep staring at your phone and watching, and we'll go live again, and you get to watch some performance here. And we're um, in our third beer, so oh, oh, I'm yeah. going to... Uh, oh, hey, somebody else now? Somebody? Somebody? Uh, Whispering Girl, come on, one of you guys on the sofa, we need a beer. Oh, wait, come on. Somebody come, Anybody, get a beer. All right, yeah. Brian's going to take the beer for the yeah. team. Thank you, all right. Yeah. Okay. So. Say hi to Sebastian Ortiz. Oh, hey, Sebastian. <laughs> come on, best <laughs> friends. So. Everybody's all like, you're not here in the house, but you're watching us exactly. on the so we appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I know I was rambling on about, um, well, Upon a Burning Body, but the whole point of that was their most recent album they released, or, or vinyl, was, thank you, um, they put out a CD, and then all of a sudden I got an email that says, hey, so our vinyl's limited release, we've got less than 100 copies left, and I was like, uh, done, and I put in the order, I was like, I, you know, I, I actually have a turntable, and, um, <laughs> And I order, they're like, if you order the album, you get the vinyl. You get you order the vinyl, you'll get the CD with it. And I was like, uh, for twenty five bucks, okay, done. So sure. I got these guys their vinyl, and I, the CD. It's it's uh, it's it's badass San Antonio metal. And I I played it. And I told my daughter, I was like, hey, I'm gonna put this on. I promise you won't last twenty seconds <laughs> because she loves country music. She oh, is awesome. a country music girl. And so she was like, oh, okay, because my neighbors, like, I texted them, I'm like, hey, please, they dropped something at my door, please go get it, I don't trust the neighborhood, go get my damn shit off my doorstep. <laughs> yeah. So he, he took me up, got Mitch to come get it, and uh, then I come home, I'm all excited, I'm like, yeah, I opened the album up, and I'm like, ah, it's so pretty, and I pull out the CD and I throw it in, I stare at my daughter, I'm like, 20 seconds. She's like, okay. It was about six and a half seconds into that album starting. She was all like, she put her AirPods in. She's like, oh, wow. <laughs> no. So, but, uh, it, you know, and I haven't written. So I started this by doing uh, photography for live music. You know, I was taking of the, the bands in Austin. I'd go to the shows and the clubs and the bars and I'd shoot photo of it. And then somebody was like, you know, hey, you know, tell stories and so I wrote a blog and then it was with the photos and that kind of continued on and I ended up like shooting Taylor Swift and Kenny Chesney and what? yeah I was all like I'm just a, like a local dude doing this shit in my living room and I'm all at a Taylor Swift show okay wow um that's awesome and it just continued on and then it progressed to the point where we're hanging outside and people come over and hang out on the weekend and we're you know like I, I commented earlier, we're drinking and, and playing guitar and barbecuing. And so it was like, well, we should do a show about this. Okay. And Three Beers and a Whiskey was born, you know, almost two years ago. And I had said this earlier, this is my way to um, give back to the music scene by yeah, like, sure. man, if I can have you guys come on and sit down and we'll talk about like, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> and then chat and then, you know, feed everybody and then let you perform. For the world, um, yeah. especially you know in today's climate, literally today's climate, where they're canceling South by. Oh yeah, I mean. <sighs> the so virus. They, yeah, okay, the COVID nineteen, the beer flu. Because if we if we if we actually call it by its name, 
believe it or not, okay. they will. Oh yeah, they'll demonetize and they'll. Sh they, oh, I've already looked into it. Yep. If you drop it and it shows up, if they, if they, if, they, if the algorithms pick it up, that you call it by its name. It's it's brutal. So wow. so COVID nineteen isn't being picked up yet, and the beer flu isn't being picked up yet. The proper name. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm not scared of that, but the whole idea of like, hey, we're gonna cancel South by. Come <laughs> on, man. I, yeah, I don't. I just recently uh, read a study actually that South by is the third uh, most economic producing. Like financial for all, all really? it goes like it was like Formula One. Okay, yeah, F one. And then, sure. uh, have you been in an F one race? I haven't yet. I haven't. Dude. I want to go to Coda bad, so I, I've got to get out. So have, wait, wait. So okay, there's F one, but have you ever been out to Coda? I haven't. Oh man, you got to go out to the track. It's gorgeous. Have y'all been out to the track? Anybody out here? You you been out to the track? Been out there. Can you? Uh, do you went to a concert one time. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's being out there, man. That is, it's a gorgeous facility. I mean, it's huge. It's way in the middle of freaking nowhere, way out in East Austin, but it's beautiful facility. Um, and then for concert, whether it's at the uh, the amphitheater, the Germania Insurance Amphitheater. Yeah, yeah, they just changed. They just they bought it out and from three hundred and sixty. Now it's Germania Insurance Amphitheater. Which is like what, twelve to fifteen thousand people in the amphitheater? That's pretty decent, right. and that's on the inside of the track, which is well, on the loop of the track. But then they have another stage, and this is where the Rolling Stones are playing at. They have another wow. stage that is forty plus thousand people can fit. Really? Where this other stage is? Wow, great. that place is so huge, but it's gorgeous, man. You get a chance to go, sure, yeah. even if it's. Um, buying a, a general admission ticket to just go like I'm gonna hang out for just a day for sure. Well, at, I saw at a race. online they have like a uh, where you can get in the car and drive the track. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have the track days out there. I don't know what car brand it is that does that, but uh, Audi, 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 Audi. Audi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audi has their their track days out there. And then there's Cars and Coffee, right? Cars and Coffee. Yeah, there once a month. Uh, I think it's twice. It twice a month on weeks. Sundays. Every two weeks, I think, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's awesome. super fun. You just go out there and hang out, and you go on a Sunday morning early to the Coda track and see all the... It's like a car show, but... Wow. You know, yeah. All the time. It's nice. Wow. Uh, and, and I'm tempted to go because we've got, you know, one car that I'm really... Like, I love, and like, I'm like, i to take this out there. It's not all super, but it's nice. <laughs> but now, Kendall with his Dodge truck has been out to the freaking cars and coffee, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, this is the problem with drinking beer and whiskey. We just start talking just about all sorts it. of crazy stuff. Mm. No! <laughs> I, I still have a little bit of beer. Two, three is sitting over there. Hurry up! Hurry up! That's okay, the chase. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Other way around. Other way around. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I've, I've still got this and beer number three over here. Oh, yeah, that's right. And Tyler's sure. all like... I don't get it. Why are y'all acting stupid? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we had this conversation before, right? It was yes. like, uh, you know, when cameras cut, we don't know what you're going to do. But, um, and your family's watching, they're all like, he's going to be a good boy. Um, we'll get back to, back to the music. So, five songs that you have that you're super comfortable with. Yes. Um, and your plan is to, like, produce that on... Well, I'm calling it as an EP, but yeah. with a full band. Um, but we've talked about your opinion on singles versus you know full length or versus yes. EPs. Do you have like what your it, the stretch goal is? Let's put something out with a full band and put it in recording. Have your guy from from Charlton, is it Charlton right where he does the. The producer, the producer, the producer yeah. Oh no, so he's in Denton, right? Denton, okay. Oh, okay. yeah. Denton. Yes. Okay. I've heard um, the recording studio they go to is that, uh, but I just know that every, like, literally, the the dudes I'm inspired by the most and that help me out or go to him to record okay. stuff. So. so in between now and then, you know, to keep yourself, you know, number one to promote yourself. Exactly. And then once you start promoting yourself and keeping yourself relevant with it, yes. I mean, what's 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 that? 
What's that short term plan? What's that? Like I said, I, I want to. Now. I want to be able to first off get the band going and have a have a way to go out there and play gigs and uh, make people feel the energy of a full band instead of just an acoustic. Because uh, you you can go out there all day with an acoustic, but if you don't have the, the energy with it, it, it helps. I, I believe, in my opinion. So you uh, okay? Yeah. And and my, my big thing about that is, and it goes back to when I first heard Co. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. I would. There was people that have talked about Co in my in my life before that, but I just pushed it away because I wasn't really big in Texas country at that time. And I went to that concert and I immediately went and downloaded every single one of his songs. I even bought it on iTunes and like Apple Music, you get it for free. And I went and bought it on iTunes to support the guy. And but I this mean, is that's what we were just talking exactly. about. That's exactly it. This is you're doing what I'm talking about. You should do for yourself. Exactly. And and I think that's one of the big drivers in it is I got so starstruck that night and then there's been. So you will give me advice in the industry and people that I respect a ton for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's what I'm trying to do. I just, I just want to be able to have a live show that when people go see that because they walk away from it. Exactly. Going, Whoa. Exactly. And I want to like, cheers. Oh, so that's badass. That's <laughs> that's the plan there, man. And, and the, the, whole, the whole point of that is, and I remember because uh, I'm sorry I'm talking about Cobalt so much. I don't, I don't mean to. But, uh, his first song was uh, something to talk about. And, uh, and, I mean, when he came out and played that song, it was it wasn't one of those things where you're in the crowd wondering what's going on. It was oh, focused and it like is happening right now. By what he's, and yeah, I'm storytelling on that. Yes, and I couldn't I couldn't hear after the concert, and that's fine because I could think that I wanted to do that. So yeah, so good night came out. So the, wait, your dream is to destroy people's hearing? <laughs> no, but loud is good. Loud is good. So, loud is good. Spoken by a true young person, like yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, let me, can you give me that one right there? For sure. Yep. Thank you, sir. I'm going to like finish this off. You can keep talking while I'm like, <laughs> finish it. But, uh, but yeah, Co, that's, that night got me. And then, uh, as much as I like to, I have a, I have a lot of inspiration in, in the industry, of course. Okay. Um, uh, but being in Stephenville, Texas, which I like to consider the honky tonk of Texas. The honky tonk of the capital of Texas? Yes, because there's... Does that mean, wait, wait, does that mean that Dale Watson ever played out there or was there? Cause, I don't know. I mean, he is the, come on, man, that's the <laughs> king of Honky Tonk. Do they have Lone Star Beer out there? That's the question. Ooh, they do. They do. Well, then surely he's playing. They do. They do. Right. <laughs> right. Hey, man. They keep your teeth white. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. So after that co night, I was okay. one to go see just more concerts, and I wasted about I think five hundred bucks that semester Ooh. on concerts. I know, I went so much, but yeah, but that's inspiration. I mean, you can't say you can't say you wasted. Well, true dollars. that I invested. You inspired, invested yeah. in yourself. <laughs> exactly. Cheers on that, man. Yeah. I invested myself five hundred dollars for a semester and listening to live music and exactly. going out and performing. And then, Hell uh, yeah. And then uh, so that night happened, and that was in uh, November. Okay. Um, Team. Of eighteen before, okay, before, before you got your guitar, guitar. before okay. yeah and then uh, I believe it was February early February maybe the third mm -hmm. uh, the Reed South Hall band came wait, out. wait early February maybe the third you're not being exact <laughs> or anything <laughs> I mean I mean this day was pretty in, impactful on me right. so so uh, this is after the fact that my girlfriend already introduced me to spend the money on the tickets so I was telling her about the tickets and. Uh, a band by the name of Reed Southall Band, uh -huh. uh, who is my favorite right now. I mean, all good, time. And good. Um, they came to town and they put on just an uh, outstanding show, just same as Co. Um, but that band has been so kind as to, because at that point, again, I was already starstruck. So I was at the front row just looking up at it, <laughs> like right. a fangirl in the front. But I mean, that's I was interested in it. I wanted to do it. Fanboy. Fanboy. Fanboy yeah. in the front. Fanboy. So, uh, but. Their band has been so kind to pull me aside and give me advice and uh, talk to me outside of being with each other. Really? And, yes, and I owe a lot of stuff. And a cool fact about that is, so I'm originally from Austin. Um, originally from Austin? Yes, I was born here, but my dad being a football coach. Good for you. We, yes, we, we moved around. And so I graduated up north, about six miles south of the Red River, up in a real small town by the name of Quanta, Texas. Quanta? Texas. Like <laughs> <laughs> you said that, I repeat it, and then the echo in the background is like exactly. people sitting on the sofa going, "Wanna?" Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so it's a nowhere town, one line, um, 
but that's where I met my girlfriend at, and uh, there's nothing to do in that small town to drive around. What's her name? So, Michaela is her name, so. Hi, Michaela. Yeah, hi, Michaela. <laughs> oh, he was so enthusiastic about it. <laughs> Michaela. <laughs> no, but, uh, so, there's nothing to do in that town. I mean, I'm going to be blatantly honest with you. There's nothing to do there. So, you have to go to the surrounding towns. Well, being six miles from the river, uh, Oh, don't tell me you went north of the Red River. I did. I, oh! I know. I know. So my, oh, that's my, uh, dirty. I know. So my first date with her actually was four years ago. And uh, we went to, into a town by the name of Altus, Oklahoma. Uh-huh. And probably no one's ever heard of that. Uh-uh. But it was to the Applebee's in Altus. And uh, I know. <laughs> Man, if you're young and in high school, you're looking for deals. So... Um, but two for twenty at Applebee's. <laughs> exactly. Hey, wait, wait. What's the what's the drink at Applebee's? Is the vodka the strawberry? The strawberry vodka. vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I heard that. But, but I, see, <laughs> what a good guy. He's all like, I heard that. I was not drinking it because I four years ago he wasn't twenty one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, okay, sorry. We're here. Oh no. <laughs> but, uh, tie it all in together. Later, I found out my favorite band, the Reed Southall band. Reed Southall grew up in Alpha, Oklahoma. Really? So it's about and 20 minutes from where I graduated. <laughs> so, That's, see, yeah, these are things, the little things that like you tie and put. The, you have the, the board on your wall, and you start putting the little shoestrings and tying it all together. Exactly. And you see how you know, like, here's my center point, and you watch how things connect you. Exactly. And then that freaking Disney song pops in your head. It's a small world after all. Oh yeah. Oh, we're probably gonna get banned for that just by mentioning that. So, um, so we're at beer number three. We've got beer one, two, whiskey. Thank you, sir, for uh, cheering me on with the whiskey over there. You're yeah, I, I hate you. Um, but uh, beer number three. I love uh, you too, Will. Yes. So, um, any final thoughts you want to leave everybody, family, friends, everybody watching um, about? What you're doing now, what you're going to do, what what's your like? Let's let's roll it out with what you've uh, got going on. So I'm just uh, playing locally right now, trying to get everywhere I can, trying to play uh, everything. Like I said, I have, on April third, I'm opening up for the Matt Muller Band at Bucks, uh, and I'm gonna be doing everybody to come out, man. Yeah. It's look, we got plenty of time. Book your flights, get your Uber, <laughs> go down to Bucks Backyard in Butte, Texas, April third. There you go. Come yeah, on, so, man. so that's gonna be a fun night. Uh, like I said, I got a couple of private events coming up, but I'm hoping. To get some more stuff going here in the next get, little month. Get your band put together. So yes. you and your drummer, and we'll go from there. We'll go from there. Look, everybody, you guys here hanging out, sitting on the sofa, Woo. thank y'all very much for joining us. Hey, hey, all right? Woo. You, sir, thank you very much for sitting in, coming yes, and joining yes. us. Uh, y'all out there, again, from Tom Cruise Studios, three beers and a whiskey, had a great night sitting here talking to Tyler Fambro. Uh, we're gonna cut cameras and we're gonna go eat some tacos and beans. But hang on, y'all go pee and get some <laughs> Metamucil or uh, whiskey and beer. Oh, you see my wife yelling at me in the background for saying that. <laughs> Just hey, come back in a few minutes, watch the stream. We're gonna come back with a live acoustic performance from Tyler. You just give a, give us a few minutes. And we'll be back. Love y'all. Thank you for watching Three Beers and Whiskey. Tyler, sir, thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good night.